What is autism? Autism is a developmental disorder that affects communication, social interaction, and behavior. Unfortunately, there's still a lack of understanding and awareness about autism in many parts of Nigeria. Today, we will be exploring what autism is and how it affects individuals and their families and what we can do to raise awareness and support those living with autism. Prevalence of autism in Nigeria, according to the Nigerian Society for Autism, it is estimated that there are over 2 million people with autism in Nigeria, and this number is expected to rise. However, despite the high prevalence of autism in Nigeria, there is still a lack of awareness and understanding of the condition, leading to stigmatization and discrimination. Diagnosis of autism involves a comprehensive evaluation by a team of healthcare professionals, including a developmental pediatrician, a psychologist, awareness and acceptance. It is important to raise awareness about autism in Nigeria to reduce the stigma and discrimination against individuals with autism and their family. We can achieve this by promoting education and understanding of autism, providing support services for families and caregivers, and advocating for policies that promote the rights of individuals with disabilities. Challenges faced by individuals and families affected by autism in Nigeria. Some of the families with a child or children with autism in Nigeria face a number of challenges, including lack of access to appropriate diagnosis and treatment, stigma and discrimination, and limited support services. Many families also face financial difficulties as they try to provide the necessary care and support for their loved ones. Raising awareness and support for those living with autism. There are several ways we can raise awareness and support these in individuals. First, we can work to improve access to diagnosis and treatment, as well as support services such as therapy and educational program. We can also raise awareness about autism through education and advocacy, including training for healthcare professionals, teachers, and general public. Finally, we can work to reduce stigma and di discrimination through community outreach and awareness campaign. So, what do you think? Have you ever encountered autism or do you, I mean, have you, apart from here? Yes, yes, I have, I have had the opportunity to witness this, but it's quite unfortunate that in Nigeria, we see it differently. I, I want to hold it to a fact that um, our cultural belief of being fetish, you know, sometimes you, you take it to a traditional taboo to say somebody is actually, you know, doing something bad to the children. So it's just like the way we have um, what Yoruba called abiku, you know, in, in those days where people die young and they come, not knowing that uh, it is genetic, more like a genotype, you know, that is not maybe SS, maybe that kind of child that is called abiku is SS, you know, because they, they match make people as at that time. So there are a lot of things that we need to actually change when it comes to that. We need to look into the cultural belief, you know, we need to look into the religion belief and what have you to have, because that, that is predominantly what, you know, shape our thinking in this part of the world, mm. you know, from childhood to where we are today. And beyond this, the awareness is necessary, just like you said. And I believe we should begin to advocate for private entity to also find a way to put a percentage of their CSR or those private CSR into special needs like autism, special disability, and what have you. I believe it's going to go a long way because we, we don't see it because it's not actually making business sense. You know, just like I said, People talk about themselves. Anything they do, even when they are doing CSR, it has to translate to money. Mm. You understand? But if it's not translating to money, it's very few people that will do things voluntarily. We are not saying they should not do things that to promote their business, right? But they should also try and separate a percentage of this, their CSR to support special needs or special cases like this. I can give you an example. I was uh, opportune to be in an European country, 
mm. some times ago. And inside the car park, like the underground car park, the fourth, the third or the fourth floor underground, I saw someone just trying to direct. I said, oh, who is this person? Is an autism patient, mm. you know, person. But I look at the compassion. They gave this person job, like a security guard to help. You know, it's not like it's a wasted human being, just like we have it in Nigeria. When you have a special need, you, you are tend to be like you are useless. You are not useful. You know, the love, the care and is not there. And I, I believe if we begin to embrace other abilities and show care, that's all that is needed. Once we're able to show care, it will help us to even identify symptoms, guide, know about more uh, awareness that I have seen this and educate other people. Thank you. Um, so quickly, before I, I heard some few things that made me just like, okay, okay. Um, first and first, you said autism patient, but I just, I know that you didn't mean that, but it's very important to also put it out there that because someone has been diagnosed with autism does not mean that the person is a patient or medically termed because uh, autism is not a medical condition that requires um, medication or that requires you to be treated in a particular facility or whatever. So it, autism doesn't have a physical marker. It's not um, like, oh, okay, there's a special ability for this and that. With autism, it's just the person is differently wired. So it's a neuro neurological difference, meaning the way I think, the way I see, the way I interact with the world is different. It's not that the person is less. It's not that the person is more. It's just I'm just different. Mm. And so it's like the more you come out there and say, look, it's just, a, it's just a different. No, So accept me, accept my differences. And that's why in a place like where you said you travel to, they've been able to understand that I'm not different from you and I. I can be gainfully employed. Mm. I can do certain things that life has accorded to me without me having to be looked down on as being less. So it's mm. very important to start to change that narrative because mm. when you started saying answer. those things, I, I said, I, I oh, don't know. I, now I know. Thank yes. you. Thank <laughs> yes. You. I, I think um, it's one of the, the things that this program has afforded us is to be able to put this out there as a means of awareness because um, before now, yes, I've heard about autism, but not in this light. Um, and I think uh, more has to be done regarding awareness. And I think also one of the reasons why parents who have kids with this syndrome, uh, because of stigma and discrimination, don't often allow their kids to go to school. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, they are prone to being bullied. And uh, some, some teachers if you do, don't even have that uh, special training to be able to identify, might be uh, me taking on that kind of a child or me tagging them differently. And that makes it make them to, be, to look different in class. And then, you know, and when you have that kind of treatment, it brings stigma, uh, stigmatization, and all of those. So, that awareness is very necessary. Mm. Uh, the government has to be involved, like we always say. And of course, uh, we, I know there will be one or two uh, NGOs that would really be taking attention on this and trying to put more information out there for people to know. And again, on, on the area that you mentioned the other time, which has to do with the cultural beliefs, you know, everything about culture has to do with, okay, you see, because the, the mother uh, had aborted or used some drugs when she was pregnant with the child and that was why, you know, a whole lot of issues come around when you have a baby with some, some of these uh, syndromes and, and so it is important. I think awareness is, is what we need to happen more in this regard. I totally agree with you about awareness. And um, that's what we're talking about when we said discrimination. You know, you, you pointed out several ways that people have been discriminated on in time past. But it's, very also, it's also very important to note that for autism, there's no genetic marker. Unlike Down syndrome and some other genetic, um, or some other neurodevelopmental, you know, disability or disorders, autism has no genetic marker. And as of today, scientists are still baffled by the cause 
and they still do not have a definitive cure for autism. So when you have situations like that, and then you have parents, you know, still, or, you know, people still believing that autism was caused by something they did, it, it's not helping us change the narrative of the acceptance. It's not helping us push the narrative of the awareness, the advocacy, and gives them to act the way they do. Because the day you remove the veil, and they see what is under it. They say, ah, this is not just this. But when you just come, masqueraded, they don't, because, you know, with autism, it shows differently. If you've met one child with autism, you've only met one child with autism. You can't use that one child that say, ah, because it spins around, it does this, it does that, this child is, and then you see another child that is not spinning, that is not, and then someone tells you, oh, this child is autistic. I say, no, it cannot be. I saw Tade the other day. So, Chukwebeka cannot be. He's not rolling around, he's not, and then in your mind, you think that person is not. And you just see the person charge at you, immediately you say, ah, Something is wrong with this child. But when you now start to unmask, unbox, understand what it is, it makes it easier for parents. Even because sometimes it's not that the parents don't even know what's going on, but because they are afraid of the label that society will put on them. Mm. So they are quick to say, I don't know. Mm. Mm. And, and, and I also think uh, education has to play a vital role here at all levels, both from the secondary school, primary school, secondary school to tertiary institution. Because I, I could recall that um, there is a case like that. Actually, it's, it's in a film, right? It's primary school, is Indian. This child has this symptom, right? And it's, it's just like you said, he sees things differently. So he, he keeps feeling. But when you ask a written exam, the child fails. But when you ask aura, it's sharp. Like, what is wrong? This is exactly what you say, but this is a different thing you are writing, right? And the, the, the teacher was able to carefully study the, the child and see that the child is seeing age as you. You know, it sees things differently and try to guide. Say, look at this, look at this. Today, we, we hardly have guidance and counseling departments functionally the way they are expected to be. When you observe something, the teacher of a class, maybe an integration science class or mathematics class, should refer to a guardian and counselor to help identify one or two things and guide. You know, but right here we don't have it, and the education system has to, you know, catch up with the reality. You know, I, I believe if that it will help us to manage the society's stabilization in terms of the education, education parts to educate people from right from there and people will know that this is a special kid yeah. right yeah i like what you said but just a note um the particular um thing you were describing is dyslexia that's the autism okay yes the one that you can you can identify I, letters and all of that so it's also important because sometimes we get a lot of misdiagnosis in mm. there because you see um, a particular um, issue uh, at hand or a challenge and then because of one or two things or one or two seminars you've attended <laughs> you just assume that that is it and that is why it's important to have a multidisciplinary um, diagnosis mm. team diagnosis. Mm. to define what exactly is going on because you say oh good. yes so it's very important autism is not something that one teacher just looks and says that's that must be what's going on it requires certain team of professionals to use their diagnostic tool to be able to give a definitive diagnosis mm. of autism thank you thank you so much thank you so much for that enlightenment i believe we have uh, gained a lot and we'll still keep learning thank you yes sir so is next after the break do stay with us <laughs>